Have you ever wondered how strong 3D printed threads are? Now I'm not talking about the brass inserts that you usually see in 3D printed projects where you melt in these metal inserts that give you fully metal threads. I'm talking about actual 3D printed threads. Well I have two, so today we're going to put that to the test. How strong are 3D printed threads? Now the reason I want to test this is because I'm working on designing and 3D printing a couple parts and pieces for my Alexa Classic. And I'm planning on filling most of these parts with quarter 20 threads so I can mount, you know, various camera accessories and monitor mounts and things like that. But before I do that and put, you know, all my trust into these 3D printed parts on, you know, a really expensive camera with expensive accessories, I really want to know how much weight these threads can handle you know, before they get ripped out of the 3D print or, you know, the threads themselves just shear off or something like that. All right, so I quickly designed this little uh, box pretty much with a quarter 20 thread that goes all the way through it. And I made sure there was enough room around the thread itself that it wouldn't just attach the thread to the walls themselves. You know, there's still gonna be infill all around it. Because in the pieces that I'm actually printing, the threads are gonna be, you know, in the center of it just surrounded by infill rather than right by the walls of the pieces. So strength-wise, this should be a pretty good representation of the pieces that I'm gonna print. I'm gonna be printing these in PLA+, Plus, which is slightly stronger and better than standard PLA. And then I'm gonna print these with a couple different infill densities to see how that affects the strength of the threads. And then I have this 110 pound fishing scale, which hopefully we won't go past the 110 pound mark. I'm guessing we won't get anywhere close to it but we'll find out soon. So I'm gonna show you the exact way I'm gonna test these in just a minute, but first things first, let's get these pieces printed. All right, so like I said, I'll be using PLA Plus for this, and specifically this Anchor Make PLA Plus right here. And this is in a bright yellow, which kind of reminds me of like a crash test dummy, which is kind of what these are gonna be. So, I don't know, kind of works out perfect. Now Anchor Make was kind of enough to send this over along with their Anchor Make M5C printer, which is a huge upgrade compared to my Ender 3 V2 Neo when it comes to just ease of use and speed printing especially. So huge thanks to Anchor Make. I will be printing the final Alexa pieces out of this exact filament and color as well, which is another reason why I'm printing it on this filament, just to know exactly what it's going to be like you know, on the parts that I'm printing. And I'll be making a video about designing and printing those parts. It'll be on my other channel, which is linked down in the description. So if you want to see me put this to use on some camera parts, go down and subscribe there for when that video comes out. All right, so we got all printed here. I have four different infill densities that I'm gonna be testing, and then I printed three of each one just so we can average out the results of three different tests. So we got 10% infill, 25% infill, 50% infill, and then 100% solid infill. And then all the other settings are exactly the same between these, so the only differences are 10% infill, 25, 50, and 100% infill. Printed with the Anchor Make M5C in PLA Plus with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And then for the testing, I kind of have this little setup right here. So this is just a super clamp that I can clamp onto something really sturdy with a quarter 20 thread in the end that's gonna partly thread into the test block. And then I have this quarter 20 thread eye hook on this end that I'm gonna thread in part of the way as well. And I'll make sure it's threaded in the exact same amount for every test, just so it doesn't, you know, reduce or increase the strength differently for each block. And then basically just pull until something breaks. Actually, let's try something. Leave down in the comments how much weight you think the 100% full solid infill threads are gonna handle. And then I'll give a guess right now as well. This is without knowing anything. I haven't ran any of these tests yet. I honestly, I, I have no clue what to expect at all. So I'm gonna guess for the 100% solid infill, it's gonna hold 46 pounds, that's my guess. 46 pounds before something breaks. That's my guess for 100% of fill. Let me know down in the comments what you think, but I'm not gonna waste your time anymore. Let's go ahead and run some tests. Three different prints of each one. I've got the clamp clamped onto my desk right here. Everything's ready to go. Let's go ahead and run these tests. All right, I found a new place to mount it. Hopefully this will be a little stronger. My desk was starting to bend a little bit and that was just the ones with 10% support. So I decided to move it to a hopefully a lot stronger, more durable mounting location to do the rest of the tests.
All right, here we go. The results are in. I averaged out the scores of each test to get the average strength of each of the four infills. And then after I read off the scores, I'm gonna do one final test, which is gonna be to try to lift my Alexa with one of these 3D prints here. This is the tier four, the 100% infill. This is a pretty heavy rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to the scale and try to lift it with one of the 3D prints for the final test. I'll also put a chart up on screen with all the numbers if you wanna look at that as well. But for 10% infill, the average weight capacity is just over 48 pounds, which is honestly a lot more than I thought even the 100% infill would get to. And then for 25% infill, we got an average of about 67 and a half pounds. That is a great score and 25% infill is pretty common. And that's what I use most of the time between 20 and 30% infill. And then we got 50% infill. The average is 89 and a half pounds. That is an amazing score for just this little piece of 3D printed plastic. Especially the fact that the way this is printed, we're pulling the layers apart. So the strength is also really affected by the layer adhesion itself. So I'm really surprised to see it got this high of numbers. All right, and then lastly, for the 100% infill, I actually ended up maxing out the scale at 110 pounds. And then it went a little bit farther and that was pretty much my limit right there. So I didn't even end up breaking the 100% infill blocks. It went over 110 pounds. I would say probably closer to 115 and it never ended up breaking. So that is awesome. And that's actually what we're gonna be using for this test. This is a fresh one that hasn't been tested yet. All right, let's lift this. Look at that. All right, so I think it's safe to say, I'm not really gonna have to worry much about the strength of the threads, mostly just the strength of the actual pieces themselves. Cause this is a pretty much best case scenario where there's no you know, leverage from different angles on the threads or the pieces itself. And there's also gonna be nothing weighing more than the entire Alexa rig itself on this. I'm only gonna have maybe microphones and monitors and things like that that you know can be slightly heavy, but nothing compared to a, you know more than a 20 pound Alexa rig. So this is something that I'm not gonna have to worry about for my use case. But hopefully this helped you out if you wanted to know how strong 3D printed threads are. But thank you so much for watching. This video took a ton of time to make, so please consider dropping a like and subscribing to my channel. And I will see you in the next video.